in your life now? My life now is, I mean, I'm, I've, it's been a year since I've been exonerated and I'm like redeveloping like I said this this relationship with the world where I'm not being hunted down and that was Amanda Knox last week on GMA we're back on Access Hollywood Live with the directors of the Netflix documentary Amanda Knox Rod Blackhurst and Brian McGinn how is she doing today is she truly able to move on with her life well, what we found is that they're all kind of trapped in this narrative that's been created about them, right? They've had these identities, you know, built on top of them. They've had these portraits painted about each of them that none of them feel are entirely representative of who they are. And they're all aware that they're going to kind of be stuck inside of this forever. You know, the end of the film, we note that Amanda is writing for the, the new, a newspaper in Seattle, mm -hmm. and she uh, advocates on behalf of the wrongfully convicted. But at the same time, Giuliano Manini is still working as a prosecutor. You know, they're all trying to, you know, move forward with their lives in their own way. And Raphael covers the courts in Italy, right? He's, a, he's yeah, sort of he's a journalist, a, which a, is interesting. <laughs> he's a true crime correspondent for television, and he has an internet company. In, That's in so South fascinating, Con considering that when you look at the, when you watch the entire documentary, you come to realize the real villain is the media. Mm. As part of the media, I mean, we are responsible in some ways for Those creating headlines. the monster. Well, I, I think that what you also see in the film is that, you know, Nick Pisa, the journalist who we talked to and who mm -hmm. was very open and candid with us, you know, he talks about the fact that it's actually the audience that is creating this desire for, for more mm -hmm. stuff. And so and no, nothing is really black and white in the story. There's no, there's no villain for us. It's, mm -hmm. it's really a complex issue and a, a lot of different ways of, uh, you know, covering stories and looking at the world, all these things kind of colliding together that created yeah. this. I mean, we're complicit too as well for making a film, right? And that, but we're hoping that there's a point of view that we're trying to take as filmmakers and there's a, a new perspective that we can add to the story, this human element to it, that, which is why, you know, we wanted to make the film, even though we are, of course, bringing it back to light and bringing it back into the media right now ourselves. Is she they, bitter at all, Amanda? Like the time you spent with her, is she bitter that all this happened and all these years of her life were lost and it's in a room I mean, we, we would be speculating, right? Yeah. Uh, but I would imagine that, you know, anyone whose life gets caught up in something for four years like that and spends four years in prison, you know, and then is released, that I would imagine there is a feeling mm -hmm. there that, that I, don't, I don't think any of us can really explain because we've never been through that. Um, but in the same way, you know, Juliana Manini has spent eight years, mm -hmm. you know, pursuing this case. And, you know, he's kind of left now feeling like he wasn't heard. And so... You know, that's the interesting thing about this story is, and then of course at the end of the day, the Kircher family has to reckon with the fact oh, that their yes. daughter. Well, right? And they weren't part of this documentary. We, I know you approached yeah. them. Why did they not want to speak we, out? We don't know, but they've been very open about the fact that, you know, they, they kind of want to maintain their, their silence about it. And they've said what, what they think, it, you know, they want to say, and they want to remember Meredith at this point. And, you know, but we include Meredith Kircher's mother at the end of the film, and you right. see kind of the, the chaos and the tumult that this has caused for her, these verdicts going back and forth. I think we can all imagine, you know, we, we may not be able to put ourselves in the shoes of the other people in this story, but certainly we can all imagine what it's like to, to lose a daughter like that and then to try to deal with, you know, mm -hmm. four and, different verdicts. Yeah, and to remember, too, that it's a, a tragedy that started this whole thing off, right, and that the conversation that came to be was so far removed from that. Um, in, in the way it was turned into entertainment and the way that it like, you know, it got its hooks in people and, and kept them tuning in, you know, for the better part of a decade. What did you guys want the takeaway to be? I think we, wanna, we want people to kind of examine our own roles in, in kind of mm -hmm. this, this interest in true crime stories and try to figure out, you know, A, how do we consume these stories? What, what, what gets us so fascinated by them? And then, you know, what role do we all play in kind of, you know, perpetuating these stories and making them so exciting for people? I think that's a really interesting kind of you know, ethical and moral question. It, it speaks to larger issues than, than even just the true crime genre. You know, we all have to figure out, you know, how do we believe what we believe? Well, there's so much of it out there now with the true yeah. crime. It's, you know, it's everywhere now. The John Bonet story is 20 years now. People still trying to figure that murder. one out. So yeah, yeah. you've tapped into something, but it, it does, it's, it bears the responsible question is, are we all to blame in some ways for what we're seeing in right. the media? We, we hope that people, you know, maybe tune in because they, they're expecting sort of a forensics examination or something that's like about guilt and innocence, mm -hmm. but they come away with a character study or a, more of a why did it happen than a who done it. Um, because there's a lot of things to unpack there. You know, people are complex. The situation is far more nuanced and uh, complicated than, you know, a black and white legal conclusion.